Hi, I'm Hex. And I'm Bajo. And we host a show on the ABC called Good Game, which is a video game review show. Yes, we are video game critics, and today's theme is play, and we love to play games. Yeah, we really do. <laughs> games are a really exciting medium that we've really loved and been passionate about for a long time, and they are really an art form. It's a very lucky time for us to be playing games, too, because they've gone from this like 2D, simple, square-shaped kind of experience to these big 3D, realistic, photorealistic, branching, branching storyline, <laughs> emotive, uh, epic adventures. Yeah, I think not a lot of people are aware that there's some really interesting and exciting things happening with narrative in video games and the way story is explored and the element of player interactivity within that is really exciting. Yeah, you know, as humans we love to tell stories. I think that's a big part of human history since we, you know, climbed out of the sea and video games are just another way to do that, but they can do it in really complicated and interesting and technical and visually stunning ways. Yeah, yeah. but then involving things like, um, you know, competitiveness and um, puzzle solving, cooperation, all of that kind of stuff as well, which is really exciting. And video games really are art. You know, I'm not afraid to admit, Hex, that I have cried at least twice this year because oh, of things that have happened in games. Me too. Yeah, they <laughs> really pull at the heartstrings. And yeah, you're right, and a lot of people really consider games as an art form or something that is worthy of preservation, but they absolutely are. Games are part of our history, and it's really important to preserve them as well, just like anything historical. And digital preservation is something that's kind of tricky. It's you know, we recently went to um, an exhibition in a museum that had a whole bunch of old arcade games and I remember seeing um, a father taking his, his kid uh, and saying, oh, yeah, this is a game called Asteroids and I used to play this when I was a kid. And <laughs> he was trying to teach his son how to play this game and yeah. his son was like, largely unimpressed with the whole thing because it was just unlike anything he'd ever played before. And I thought, you know, that's, it's so important to be able to let people know that this is the evolution of games and this is where games started and where they came from. Yeah, you know, games are a big part of our world now, you know, and I think it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So we need to kind of mark those points, those turning points in, in video game evolution and in technology evolution and kind of capture those experiences. You know, like you say, playing asteroids, that's something that is going to be hard to capture in 100 years from now. Yeah. How do we do it? And what about online games? You know, mm. like the online experiences we're having now where we're creating worlds in like Minecraft or, or silly games like Reign of Kings, which I personally love a lot because it's got all this role playing stuff in it. We're building mm. castles and knocking them down. That's an experience that sits in an online space. And that online space won't be there one day when that game eventually loses yeah. popularity and they can't sustain the servers. Something like World of Warcraft will end one <laughs> One day probably and where's that world gonna go that world is gonna be dis disappearing and there are also many <laughs> stories you know not just stories within the actual game world but stories that players have created yeah. and we'd I'd love to, to think that at least some of those stories would be able to be protected and, and preserved we're starting to see a big resurgence in retro games because it's almost like games have evolved to a point where they explain too much to you or they hold your hand a little bit too much and experiences are becoming very accessible and taking advantage of all the various different aspects of technology. But there is something about that original core experience of just trying to hit a target or you know, um, just that based on the pure reflex. And I think it's really important to kind of preserve the um, starting point of games to be able to reference you know, every modern design experience as well. Yeah. And a lot of a lot of that experience is down to the technology of the time. Mm. And that technology is dying, you know? Like, uh, trying to find a working computer from the 80s, it's good luck. It's a challenge. The reason why <laughs> Super Mario has a moustache is because they didn't have enough pixels to be able to create a full face for him. Mm. So they were like, well, just give him a moustache and you'll kind of get <laughs> a sense of who he is. I think that's so great, you know, yeah. it's not a problem we face now, but I love that that was a challenge for them back then. What I love about games, Hex, is that every year they kind of reinvent themselves and we get new genres. We're still creating genres in games. And, you know, when I think back in the day, I would look at the back of the box and see like a dragon and a guy and a castle, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, and all these people. And then you look at the game and it'll just be a red dot. Okay, that's the dragon. <laughs> That's, that square there is this guy, and that square there is that guy. Your imagination really had to fill in the blanks. It did have to fill in the blanks. <laughs> yeah. And we could never have imagined what games would look like as they do now. Like the way they look now, this, I never would have thought they would have looked this good. So what is it going to be like it's in so 100 years? It's so hard to imagine. <laughs> yeah. I, we just can't predict what it's going to become based on what it has been. And that's so exciting.